sermon series titled Family Matters Because Families Matter. And I know you have been blessed. We have had a great time in our services, in our castle, in our castles. We have discussed so many issues regarding the family. Over the last few weeks, some of the things that we have learned is number one, God wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your family. He wants you to enjoy your family. When you find enjoyment in your family, God takes delight in it. We spoke about a culture of honor. How a foundation of honor is so essential for building healthy families. Well, all of us will not have perfect families. All of us must aspire to have healthy families. We learned that God wants to showcase our families to the world. He tells Abraham, I want to bless you and I want to make your name great. So that all the families of the world will be blessed by you. We spoke about how we should prepare our families for the storms of life. The devil and this fallen world will try to take us down in the storms of life. But God wants to set us up for victory. Hallelujah. And then last Sunday, we, we learned about love and forgiveness. The, the two Ambayaluas. Love and forgiveness, two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist in your home without the other. For love to thrive, forgiveness must apply. And for love and forg when love and forgiveness is in abundance, your family will be a healthy family. We learn these wonderful things and I know through the my, many, many testimonies across all three congregations, so many families have encountered God in amazing ways. Some, some of them are saying, we have never prayed together, but now we are praying together. Some others are saying, my husband never took me on a date, but now he takes me on a date. He left the children with, my, with our parents and he took me out, you know. And uh, fathers have taken their children out for meals and family dynamics have come back. Great things are happening and all glory to God and to God alone. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Now, as I bring this series to a close, I always knew that on, my, on the last Sunday, I would want to preach this theme. Because 
I started off this series by saying God wants to bless your family. I want to end this series by saying that God wants to bless the families of your generations. God is not just satisfied to blessing only you and your family. God wants to bless your family to a thousand generations. Do you believe that? Do you believe that with all your heart that God wants to bless your family to a thousand generations? Who knows? Out of your families, the next president of Sri Lanka could come. Don't laugh. Some of you are laughing. Don't laugh. Just say amen. Who knows? Maybe the next senior pastor of Calvary Church will most probably be from one of your families. Say amen to that. Amen. Because God is inherently a blesser. He wants to bless your families and he wants to bless your families to a thousand years generations sadly we live in a world where we are more far more concerned about generational curses than blessings we see a woman in the supermarket behave in a rather inappropriate manner and what is the first thing we say just like the mother we see a young boy come home drunk just like the father useless fellow not good for anything, just like the father. His grandfather was like that. His father was like that. He is like that. His son will also be like that. Now all of you all are laughing because in some way or another, you all have all been guilty of this offense. Right? Just like the mother, just like the father. However, negative things may have passed down, have been passed down to you like a spiritual cancer through all your genealogies but I want to tell you today in Christ you have the opportunity to put an end to any curse that has been in your family and in Christ you can initiate a blessing beyond your wildest dreams hallelujah because that is who God is your life can either be a stepping stone for your family and the generations to come or your life can be a life that will bring your family down in Christ, you can choose what your, your generations will become. The Lord is a way maker, but you can also be a difference maker. If you will partner with the Lord, you will inspire and start a blessing that will last for a thousand generations. Now we started this series in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2, 3 and 4, where God comes and tells Abraham, Leave your household and you go to a place that I will show you. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. Curse those who curse you. All the families of the world will be blessed by you. Now that's great for Abraham and his genealogy. But how does that apply to us Sri Lankans? Living so many thousands of years after him. Api kalui. Eyasudui. That's what we might say. Abra it's good for Abraham and through Abraham well so came Isaac so came Jacob so came David so came Jesus so came Israel what does that blessing have to do with us follow me here to Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14 where it says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us so that in Christ Jesus, the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. So that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Look at that. So that in Christ, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Hello, Gentiles means us. The blessings of Abraham will come to us. Paul does not stop there. He goes further down. He says in Galatians 3, 28, 29, he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And look at this. If you are in Christ or if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. Yes, according to the promise. My friends, if you haven't been praying Genesis 12, 2, 3, and 4 for your family, you better go home and start praying it now. Because that promise and those blessings and the 6,600 promises given 
to Abraham's family are yours and for the taking. You need to start believing that God has bigger dreams for your family and your generations than you have for yourself. Now there are some of you who might be thinking, well, pastor, that's good for other families, but I don't think it's applicable to my family. There is no way this sermon applies to me because if you would know the background that I come from, if you would know what happens at home, if you know the state of my family, then you yourself will say that this sermon does not apply to you. Well, I want to give you this one thought and you take it to heart and believe it with all that you've got. At any point in time, let me say it again, at any point in time, in Christ, you can put a stop to a generational curse and step in to a generational blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. At any point of time, you don't have to wait to get your marriage on track. You just decide today is going to be the day that life will change and those things will fall into place. At any point in time, not on your own, in Christ, you can put a stop to any generational blessing no matter how long in the past it has come from. And you can put a stop to that and initiate a blessing to last for a thousand generations. On the day that you met Jesus, when you invited him into your life, when you asked him to come and be the Lord and Savior, the curses of a thousand generations ended with him. It ended with him and he nailed it on a cross. And as those generational curses ended, through Jesus, generational blessings began in your family. You were set free. Your generations were set free. Now all that you need to do is you need to believe in faith that what God has promised he will do for you and then you need to walk in obedience so that you will reap all the blessings of God. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11 says, May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised. That, my friends, is the character of God. He does not want to bless your children the way he blessed you. He wants to bless them even more abundantly. And as you progress down in your generations, he wants to bless your generations more and more. Deuteronomy chapter 1, the people are still under the leadership of Moses. Moses is praying, may the Lord your God of your ancestors multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he promised. Jeremiah 32, 18 says, God shows love to a thousand generations, but brings punishment on the children for the sins of the father. Now don't get caught up with the sins of the father part. Get caught up in this. One generation, the Lord will limit a discipline to one generation, but he will bless a thousand generations to come. Hallelujah. That is who God is. Because God is inherently a blesser. Now let me give you a biblical example of how this works in day-to-day -day life. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, David is having a chat with his best friend Nathan. They're having a chat. David is now in the palace. 17 years he has spent in the wilderness. And now he's in the palace and he's ruling. And the Bible says David has peace. And the golden era of Israelite history begins. And while all of this is happening, David is having a chat with Nathan, maybe after a kottu party, and saying, how can I live in this palace when my God is living under a tent? Amazing, no? Phenomenal how David thinks like that. How can I live in this palace when the presence of the Lord is under a tent? Nathan he knows David's heart and he says, do what is what you seem right. And then Nathan goes home. But on his way home, God speaks to him and says, go back and tell David, I have a word from him. I have a word for him. Nathan goes back and says, this is what the Lord tells you, David. And the Lord, I know it's on the screen, but let me paraphrase it for you. I think it sounds more, it sounds better. 
God comes up to God comes to David through Nathan and says you want to build me a home you want to build me the the king of kings the lord of lords the rule of the universe you want to build me a home i have never lived in a home i have gone with my people from tent to tent and you want to build me a home god is blown over by david's act of love amazing no how you can i know it's you can't surprise god but sometimes because he knows everything but sometimes you can catch him on a wrong foot with love you want to build me a home well let me tell you this david i am going to build you a home you will build me a palace you will build me a temple not you your son will but i will build you a house i will build you a house that will last forever your son he will build a palace for me i will be his father and he will be my son and he will build the palace but you when you fall asleep i will ensure that your generations live on forever the seat and the house of david will never fall never before me you will be a dynasty that will last forever david is blown over he can't even imagine i mean it's one of the most beautiful passages in the bible where david goes the only time in the bible there are people who stood before god there are people who knelt before god there are people who who prostrated themselves before god but there is only one instance in all 66 books of the bible where it says a man went and sat before god david goes and he sits before the lord so humble who am i that you would want to bless someone like me well everything that god told about david came to pass david lived out a mighty golden era and then you know he was he was very famous at his time but when solomon came on the scene god blessed solomon even more no one could imagine that anyone could be a blessing to a nation like david but solomon took it to another level the world came to sit at solomon's feet it was the golden era of israelite history the bible says silver was like nothing in solomon's time everything that david was promised by god god ensured that it came to solomon however when solomon was old one of solomon's weaknesses was that he had a eye a roving eye for the fair skin and he began to collect not cars or model kits he began to collect wives i don't know why he would want to do that i am struggling with one already but anyway he had a few hundred right i mean one is more than enough i love her to death but uh, one is more than enough two three four will be difficult i mean this is solomon's downfall 300 wives 700 concubines no wonder his heart was led astray but that's what happened as solomon went on in life his wives especially and he married wives foreign wives he did not marry god fearing ones he married women who had who had no idea about god who had no fear of the lord and these women led his heart away now let's go to one kings where god comes and tells solomon since this is your attitude and you have not kept my commandments and my decrees which i have commanded you i will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates nevertheless here's the next line nevertheless for the sake of david your father i will not bring it in your lifetime but i will tear it out of the hand of your son wow solomon sins but god has already promised david god has promised david that his son will sit on a throne and that throne will last so god comes to solomon and says you have sinned you have walked away from me and you deserve punishment but because i promised 
i promised a generational blessing to david i will honor it and ensure destruction does not come in your lifetime but lo and behold i never made such promises to you your son will reap the punishment of your disobedience and as it goes solomon dies is buried with his fathers rehoboam comes into kingship and it was during rehoboam's time that the kingdom of israel was split into two god blesses to a thousand generations he brings punishment on one for the sins of the father there that's an example what happens after rehoboam rehoboam's son is born he also walks in the wicked ways of his father but after him asa the king same from david's lineage he comes to kingship but because he's a good king the bible says he walked in the ways of his father not abijam he walked in the ways of his father david the generational blessings began to work again hallelujah and as those generational blessings worked there was a, there was a period where it did not work for 70 years israel were in slavery and then again it initiated again until it came into fulfillment when jesus was born through the line of david hallelujah and jesus will be the king of kings and the lord of lords and but remember this jesus came from the genealogy of david so david's legacy will also live forever with jesus hallelujah i don't know about you but i want this bealing bible combo this to last for a thousand generations and i don't want it to last like this thank god for the blessings that he has given me but i want my generations to inherit greater blessing than i have i want the promises that god gave me i want my children to experience it i want my great 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 grandchildren i don't even know their names yet but i want them to be far more blessed than i am and if you are not thinking that way my dear friends i want you to start thinking today because god wants to bless your generations for a thousand generations hallelujah hallelujah so let me quickly give you four thoughts of how you can step into this beautiful generational blessings number 1 pray for your generations pray for your generations today a lady after the singular service came into my room weeping and saying pastor i had a encounter with god in the morning service i have never prayed for my generations but as you were speaking the lord began to open my mind and he gave me a vision of what the future holds for my family and i tell you pastor from today i go back home tonight i'm going to start praying for my great 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 grandchildren i'm going to start praying for my children i'm going to start praying for my children's children i'm going to start praying for my generations 25 30 generations down the road my friends that's what david did when god gave him this amazing promise david goes to the lord and tells him now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant so that it may continue for ever before you o lord as you have spoken and with your blessings may the house of your servant be blessed forever pray for your generations i pray every morning not only for my two daughters i pray for those two nuts who are going to try and even try or attempt to steal them from me those two fellows scoundrels who are going to come one day and break my heart i have no problem shooting a couple i have a burden for prison ministry <laughs> I pray for them do you know that I pray for my grandchildren I don't know whether the lord will give me the grace to see them or not I pray for my great grandchildren I have begun praying for my generations 25 generations down the line If you have not been praying like that I want to encourage you to pray like that because God is already at work He is the alpha the omega the beginning and the end the first and the last he knows the names of your family members 25 generations down the line he is already working in their interest you better start praying for them hallelujah you didn't get here by yourself someone prayed for you
maybe you are a third generation christian your first generation grandparents did great things that's why you are here or maybe you are like me a first generation christian now it's our time to make sure that our families will live before the house of the lord forever down the road your children your children's grandchildren must be the answers to your prayer that you're praying right now they must live in a day that you dreamt about today whatever you are praying right now for your generation somewhere down the line someone is going to be born out of your genealogy and they will experience the blessings of the lord you know why because five generations before you prayed for them hallelujah hallelujah do you believe that if you don't have faith you should get up and go home now because this is a total faith sermon god is already working in your next generation after your children secondly while you are praying for your generations in faith you also need to put god first and follow him wholeheartedly there is no point praying about the future if you are not willing to live in the present pray for the future generations but make sure that you are setting up your life so that they can be blessed that's one thing about david he followed god wholeheartedly i know many of us keep pace with god we don't want to lose sight of god but david held on to god after even he got the palace it did not matter to him he would rather spend a day in the house of the lord live your life in such a way that would cause others down the road to be blessed by how you lived make a sacrifice today choose god over the world your generations will be blessed make be generous before god and he will bless your generations make commitments today commitments that will hurt your generations will be blessed your great 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 grandchildren of down the road will walk in blessing and they'll wonder why do i deserve this and god will say that's because your great 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 grandfather made this commitment he walked before me he walked wholeheartedly he chose me over everything else because of that i have stored up blessings for you somebody in your family line must experience god's goodness because the way you lived today because of your living four generations down the road must experience generational blessings when they are born into this world they must inherit a deposit full of blessings from god because you made those deposits pray for your generations live wholeheartedly before god in obedience today thirdly model to your children what you want them to be in another beautiful passage of scripture that talks about generational blessings it's found in 2 timothy chapter 1 verse 5 where paul is talking to timothy and he's saying i am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother and then i saw it in your mother too and now it is in you timothy's grandmother as he as she prayed for timothy wouldn't have ever believed that timothy young timid introvert timothy would one day senior pastor the church of the mightiest of apostles who have ever lived on this earth but paul says i first saw that faith in your grandmother and then i saw it in your mother that faith is in you i used this verse for two reasons number one it shows your pitch, beautiful picture of generational blessings but the second reason is is that i want to speak to parents who are alone you are a single parent you are trying to raise your kids in a very very trying circumstances i want to encourage you with this that a mother's faith can transfer to a son my brother and myself melanie we will all testify that we are all here because of our mothers i remember there were times i said this in the morning service as well we were strapping tall and my mother was 4 feet 2 inches and she would no matter how boisterous and rowdy we were she would 
point her finger she would just say boys we have to pray before you all go anywhere no matter what you do no matter where you go on saturday night you are coming to church on sunday morning and you know what we will go to church on sunday evening as well oh but mama you are going to church sometimes my brother was snoring while my mother was praying but as you can see faith transferred <laughs> i hope that my children will be great women of god because they saw it first in their parents you want your daughter to grow up and be a godly wife a blessing to her husband model it at home for them you want your son to be a righteous man and a man who loves his family model it for them whatever you want your children to be show it by how you lived if you didn't come from a healthy family don't give excuses make sure a healthy family comes from you finally invest in what is to come more than what is now invest in what is to come not what is now i see a lot of parents these days very concerned and troubled by what is happening in our country and they are trying to do everything that they can to give some sort of quality of life for their children which is good that's what parents should do but i'm telling you more than buying them a plot of land or buying them a car or saving up some money in a bank account let me ask you what are you doing in investing in their spiritual lives because i will tell you this world will pass away but the eternal things of god won't and if your children if you are setting up your children if you are investing in the right way your children will get it right and some of you even if you have wayward children right now if you have done the right things god will be faithful so invest in what is to come and not what is now what do you want your great great grandchildren to be start investing now start doing that by investing in your children every right choice you make today every time you choose god over the world today every time you help others today every time you give and you serve today you are storing up favor and blessings for your family tomorrow joshua was a great leader and a leader of a great era in israelite history and he finally inherited the plot of land that god promised him he had peace from his enemies he and his family were noble and they served god faithfully his entire generation served god that's why it's even more sad that judges chapter 2 verse 10 would say but after his generation a generation rose up that did not know god where did it go wrong somewhere down the road they got comfortable with their plot of land they got comfortable having peace they forgot to invest in their children and you know how that turned out go home and start today if you haven't ask god to give you generational vision begin praying for your children right now and begin praying for their grandchildren parents i know many of you have honored god you have been faithful but maybe your children have not traveled the road after you don't be disappointed be faithful and fervently pray and god will bring them back to the right road god will release an increase of favor over them god will increase a great blessing over them and they will come back for god is faithful even if your children aren't that's why i wanted to pray for your children because i'll tell you this the enemy fights our children so hard because he knows that if we are already blessed our children are going to be even more blessed if we are already powerful for god our children are going to be even more powerful for god if i am already plundering hell to populate heaven my children are going to do it greater so you know what he is going to bypass me and he will go straight for my children my children are not mature enough for that kind of spiritual battle and warfare that's why they need the protection of my prayer but let me tell you this even as i said that i am giving no excuse for all you teenagers Don't give an excuse saying mommy and daddy have not got it right. 
God is speaking to you as well. You can get it right today. Young people, you have a responsibility too. Because you are next in line. David got it right. Solomon got it wrong. Rehoboam paid the price. If you, your parents get it wrong, but you get it right, your children will be blessed. Some of you like me are first of a kind, first generation Christians. We have an opportunity to ensure that our generations will be blessed forever. Don't compromise on your faith. Don't be lazy. Don't be indifferent. Appreciate what's coming your way and live like you have already got it. Every single one of you here, I see greatness in your eyes. I see greatness in your heart and I see blessing on your life. Believe that no matter what has happened to you, today can be a day of new beginning. There are some here I know, you come from messed up, absolutely messed up families. But you put a stake in the ground today. You draw a line in the sand today and you say, enough. The devil has plundered enough. No more. No more. From today, I'm going to walk in blessing. Step into what you have been called to. Live your best life now. Be the best version of yourself now. Pray in faith. Walk in obedience. Trust God because he's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He will never fail. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Hallelujah. 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 I want to close this service by partaking of the communion table. And I want to do it very, very differently today. Because I want this communion table and what we are going to do over the next few minutes to be a prophetic act over you, your families and your generations to come. And for the next few moments, I want you to just discard the natural and step into the spiritual realm. There are two seeds represented here today. One is the natural seed that is your wife, your children and your children to come. There is also a spiritual seed. All of us are spiritual parents. We have spiritual children and they have spiritual children to come. Both of these seeds need to be blessed for generations to come. Let it just be a moment with the Lord. Hallelujah. Just pray for each other. Just release blessing on. Oh, hey. 
Every father, mother, every child I want to speak your blessings over your family I speak Jesus